Hello. Hey, is there, how's everyone going? Um, my name's Andrew. Um, I'm student advisor at U University of Queensland. Um, I'll be providing this um, oh, this this session, which would probably take less than an hour, um, but we can probably extend it a little through Q and A. So very happy at the end to um, respond to questions. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use your microphone during this session, but you can type into the Q and A. Um, Jess will be there answering questions throughout this session. Um, but yeah, I, I'm happy to talk through stuff at the end as well. Um, this should be a fun um, topic, but when we really boil down to what is any culture, um, it's, it's quite complex. Um, and as you notice here, we've got Aussie culture written as the um, title, and that's, that's an abbreviation of, of, of Australia. Um, we like, we Australians like to abbreviate or shorten as many words as possible. So we have Aussie culture. And instead of me saying good day, good day to you, I'll say good day. So let's get started. If I can get this slide to move along. Oh my goodness me. Here we go. Okay. So um, a very common um, practice at a start of a session in Australia is to acknowledge is acknowledgement of country. Um, that's an acknowledgement of the long-standing culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in Australia. Um, so, so I'll just go ahead and do what will be a common format for this acknowledgement. And it, it's, it's an impo important thing to acknowledge the land that we're on, or the land that you will be on shortly if you're currently overseas. Uh, the University of Queensland, UQ, acknowledges the traditional owners and their custodianships of the lands in which we meet. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Absolutely, we do. So welcome to Australia. If you're in Australia, welcome. If you're coming to Australia, still welcome. Um, these are some some common images you might associate with Australia. We have on the left-hand side, the koalas. Uh, we have this, uh, the Opera House in Sydney. Uh, we have the Great Barrier Reef. Um, we have an image of an Aboriginal person, uh, which I can't quite see, persons. Um, we have some road signs, some very interesting road signs showing some of the diversity of animals you might find. The left-hand side being a camel. Believe it or not, there are, I think there's over 300,000 camels in the centre of Australia. It's a vast desert area. Um, but as you can see, there's also kangaroos and wombats. And yes, and we have a vast coastline. Um, Brisbane's located close to the east coast of Australia. Well, it's on the east coast. <clears throat> so short drive to the Gold Coast and, and, and you'll find waves and surf just like in that picture just there. Oh, and the and the very top, well, the bottom side on the right hand side is Uluru. Um, used to be known as Ayers Rock, but it's 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 proper and and now used name is Uluru. Um, it's 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 in the red centre of Australia. So I've got a few notes that I'll refer to, but mostly I'll be speaking off the slides. Um, this is a picture, a map of Australia, a basic, a very basic map. Um, Australia is actually the, the sixth largest country in terms of land mass in the, in the world. Um, we can see Brisbane on the eastern coast um, that, that borders with the Pacific Ocean. Uh, then Western Australia, where we've got Perth, um, that borders onto the Indian Ocean. And don't ask me what all the other oceans are, but we, Australia has the third largest amount of ocean um, space um, out of all the countries in the world. It's, so the ocean's a very important place um, and we're part of the Asia Pacific region. Um, and there's a few facts about Australia, uh, about 25 million people, close to 2 million people, depending how you look at it in Brisbane. Um, the population of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people is, or stated here as First Nations, is 3.2%. I think this is all from the Australian Bureau of Statistics from 19, 2019. Um, so that, that'd be pretty accurate today. 21% um, of Australians speak a second language. Um, 
And crucially, you'll notice that 33% of Australians immigrated from another country. And just think about that. That means that one in three persons in Australia were not born in Australia. Um, that's, that's a significant aspect of what Australian culture is. It's a, it's a multicultural society. Um, and I'll go, I'll go into more detail about um, the different cultures you'll find in Australia because there is not just one culture. Um, and I would say that percentage is a little bit higher in, this, in the capital cities like Brisbane, like Sydney, like Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, Canberra, Hobart. Um, it, the city centres in Australia are very multicultural. Um, governance, let's see if I've got some notes on here. Um, Australia, Commonwealth, officially known as the Commonwealth of Australia. Um, so we have a parliamentary system that's that's sort of made up of the, um, uh, it's a combination of the American system and the UK system. So we have the Westminster system along with I don't know, we have a Senate, just like um, in America. We, we have a, but the difference between Australia and America is we don't have an elect, we, we elect um, a prime minister. We don't, well, we, we, elect, we elect a party. We, we don't elect a person, I should say. So we don't have a president. Um, in fact, our head of state is, uh, is the king, the king of England. Um, and yeah, so we we vote for two parties. We the main the dominant parties in Australia for a, probably about a hundred years has been Labor and the Liberal Party, um, and then we have a whole lot of other parties and independent ministers. So yes, yeah, so we're Australia's um, a democracy. So I'll go through the flags, and by going through the flags, we can provide a little bit of more background as to some of the diversity in Australia. So we have the national flag, that's that's it there. Um, I think I've got some notes on this. That was created in 1954. Um, we've got a pretty English past, Australia being a, a British colony um, from 1788. Uh, the Dutch did come here earlier. And of course, the Australian Aboriginal people have been here forever. Um, so we've got a long, long history, but in terms of post-colonial history, um, that's, that's our, that's, that flag very much represents our, our colonial history being England. Uh, so we have the Union Jack in the corner. We have the Southern Cross on the side. Um, that, that's a constellation you'll see in the, in the, in the sky sometimes in the city. Um, but if you just go for a drive um, outside of Brisbane, you will see that clearly in the sky. Um, it's probably a constellation you, you only see in the Southern Hemisphere. And then we have the, uh, what's that star on the bottom? It's called Federation Star, and it has seven points to it, representing the seven states and territory in Australia that, that, that came together. So you could say we're the United States of Australia. We all came, came together and formed a, a nation in 1901. Aboriginal flag. So in the centre, we have the sun. Um, the red represents the earth and spiritual connection to land. Um, the black represents the Aboriginal people. And then we have the Australian, the Torres Strait Island flag. So I'll show you that. So we have we have, we, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we have like the headdress. Um, I think that's called the Dari. And then we have the a star. And, and similar to the Australian flag, the, the star represents the five major island groups. Um, the Torres Strait Islands are located in the northeast part of Australia, off the coast um, between Australia and Papua New Guinea. So it's a very much an island. The island is an island nation, island people seafaring people so that 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 star represents the five major island groups and and just the importance of using stars for navigation um, the blue is obviously the ocean and the black lines represent the um torres strait islander people it's a very symbolic 
I was looking at this photo earlier. I believe I've been here. I think this is Bowen. It's up in the North Queensland area. That water looks amazing. It would be amazing. Unfortunately, there is, um, you'll find jellyfish and a little bit further, oh, a fair bit further north, you'll find crocodiles in those, in those kinds of water. But really beautiful to be near the ocean. Um, Australia is very much a... Uh, it's a country surrounded by ocean um, and we have moons of species, animals. Um, um, most of our animals you find nowhere else in the world. It's a, it, it, it's a mega diverse uh, continent and country. Um, oh, there's some, some of the stats there. Um, I won't go through all the stats, but you can see there's a lot of different species. <laughs> um, some of our best known animals, I'll, I will say, kangaroo, koala, echidna. Echidna is not pictured there as a spiky animal. Um, we have the dingo, which looks a bit like a dog. We can see that in the picture there. Platypus, wallaby, wombat. So I encourage you to go to some, or go to the outback, like the um, bush areas near our capital cities. You'll see some of these animals, but also go to some of the zoos. Um, there's some excellent zoos um, near Brisbane. I do have a note for this. Um, I think it's just basically acknowledging that our multicultural history, um, we're an immigration nation. Um, so we, Australians, come from every country, race, uh, language. Uh, this is an image from ABC, Australian Broadcasting Commission. So that's a government television station um, they've produced some amazing material as you can see you can find this on youtube so yeah i, I encourage you to look at some of the youtube videos um, from abc from sbs um, there's also a youtube video which i will promote again at the end called overseas student australia i'll read that again overseas student australia i just had a look at that before it's a really good YouTube channel that's specific to international students coming to Australia. Um, I believe the presenter is an international student himself. Um, so I'll read that again, Overseas Student Australia. Yeah, so we're a multicultural country. Um, so I was gonna try and define Australian culture and, and the more I thought about it is you, you cannot define Australian culture um, nor any culture um, because we are, we're made up of many different cultures. Um, you'll find a different culture within the University of Queensland to what you will find in Brisbane. You'll find a different culture, one hour's drive out of Brisbane to what you'll find in Brisbane. And that, and that keeps changing the further you drive away from a capital city. Um, our capital cities are a place where you can be yourself, be and in, rep represent your culture. Um, it really is um, it is is no different to any other international place. Um, but it is worth observing some of the things that you see when you are in a new culture and observe and maybe copy some of the cultures that you see. You'll notice that. Australians like to line up. Um, we like to line up for things. Um, we're very much rule abiding. Um, we're generally fairly quiet, although that 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 rule gets broken frequently, particularly at sporting events. Um, yeah. So yeah. So I'll keep moving on. So Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander is is a, is a key aspect of Australian Australia's long history. Um, and really a, a valuable culture to um, to interact with as much as you can when you stay in Australia. We have, a, we have we have a lot to learn from Australian and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, yeah, so it's the oldest living culture. Um, it's the world's oldest living culture. Um, it says here more than sixty thousand years. If you spoke to an Aboriginal person, they would say that they. They have been here forever. They are, they are not separate to this land. They are part of this land. Um, they have a deep and meaningful spiritual connection. Um, so that 60,000 years is a scientific figure. Um, yes, Aboriginal people were here before the arrival of the British in 1788. Um, and at that time, there was it's estimated there's approximately 700 language groups. And as we know, with language, uh, each language has its own culture. So there's... 
there's a lot of different Aboriginal cultures and languages in Australia. Um, yep, First Nations or Australian Aboriginals are, are prominent in Australian culture. They are also our politicians, academics, activists, artists, and sports people. There's some images from, from some, of, some of those prominent Aboriginal people. Um, don't think I've got any notes for this one. No, it's a, it's a nice image anyway. Oh, here we go. We've got a video. Let's go. I think I might have skipped that, so I'll keep, I'll keep it going. Okay, that was good. Oh, let's move on to the next slide. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Aboriginal history, there's an opportunity when you're at the University of Queensland to do ABTS 1000. Um, the one indicates it's a first year subject. Um, I would say the AB is Aboriginal and Torres Strait. Uh, it's a major in the Bachelor of Arts, but it looks like you can take it as an elective from other courses um, and explores the history, contemporary issues, uh, in-depth perspectives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. So check that out. Um, here's some, these are the things that are listed as Australian values. Um, I will go through it. I'll let you have a, a bit of a read. There's a little bit there. It, it is a true statement. This comes from the Department of Home Affairs website. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this was something that you would have read when you were um, applying for, for a visa. Um, so yeah, the, some of these values are drawn from lots of different areas, including the United Nations, I can see, respect for freedom and dignity of the individual. Um, essentially, this can be paraphrased or summed up as respect letting other people um, live their lives and, and not interfering. It's essentially a, a key, we're a very individualist society, a very pluralistic society, Australia. Um, so we, we, it is against Australian culture to, um, to, to be unkind to someone or interfere with the way they want to express themselves. Um, so that's a key aspect of Australian culture. Um, as I mentioned before, commitment to the rule of law um, is a key aspect of Australian culture. We like to follow rules. Um, it is something we aspire to as an equal opportunity for all people, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, age, disability, race, or national or ethnic origin. This is something we aspire to. Um, and I can I can see signs of that, that progressively happening, but you'll see plenty of um, times where that is not happening. Um, a fair go, that, that's a concept in Australia that, that embraces this idea of mutual respect, tolerance, compassion for those in need, uh, and again, equality or opportunity for all. Um, interestingly, we've got here recognising the English language as the national language. Um, yes, yep, it is, it is the, the, the language most, mostly used in Australia, that is true. Sport, um, if you want to get an insight or you want to get straight into Australian culture, I suggest you attend some sporting matches, you view it on the television. Um, if you, especially if you're in Sydney and Melbourne, you will definitely follow a team. You will probably follow an AFL team, Australian Football League. You might choose to follow a soccer. Uh, we have cricket here as a picture. That's, that's a game. You may have seen it's very popular in England and the Commonwealth countries. 
Uh, surfing is something you might like to try. You can have there's surfing lessons available all down the East Coast and the West Coast. Um, yeah, so you can go to the Gold Coast and get surfing lessons and give that a go. Um, and then we've got an image of Kathy Freeman from the 2000 Olympics. Um, she went in, I believe that would be an image from the 200 meters, was it from the 400 meters, which she went on to win, win that race. Uh, she's an Abri Aboriginal Australian. Uh, arts and culture, yeah, great opportunity when you're in Australia to participate and appreciate the huge art scenes that we have, multiple scenes. Um, You'll find that through social media, doing uh, searches on Australian, I'm not Australian, the um, Brisbane City Council website always keeps a list of upcoming events. Um, there's a huge music scene um, in Brisbane City, particularly in the Fortitude Valley area. Um, yeah, really well worth checking out. We have oh, the Gallery of Modern Art. I'd say that's a picture from the Gallery of Modern Art um, that's located in South Brisbane or South Bank, um, very close to St. Lucia, very accessible by public transport. So yeah, check out the Gallery of Modern Art and that whole arts precinct. Yeah, so there's some websites, visit brisbane.com.au and Brisbane City Council as well. Oh, here's some of the fun bit. Okay, so here's a few. Um, here's a bit of Australian language. Um, culture is, is very much linked to language. As I said, we like to shorten things. Um, see how you go. I'll, I'll, I've got a list here. Here's some beginner words. Um, I'll just bring them all up and see how you go. If you, Oh, I'll come to intermediate and say, oh, no, we've gone to intermediate. Okay. So for the beginner list, I wonder how many of those are words that you know or understand from the Australian version of English already? These are, these are words that you'll hear fairly regularly. Um, I think you'll hear some of the ones in the intermediate list there too. I'm just going to move my cursor. Um, a lot of these words are shortening of, of words that you will know. Uh, cheers is just thank you. Uh, it comes from holding up a glass of beer, typically, or alcohol, saying cheers. Um, I think Japanese might say kampai. Uh, reckon comes from do you reckon, uh, do you think so? What do you reckon? You reckon we should go to University of Queensland? I reckon we should. Bottolo. That bottolo is an alcohol shop. Don't ask me why we call it a bottolo, but we do. Uh, instead of saying no problem or not a problem, we say no worries. Instead of saying good afternoon, we say arvo. Often instead of a cup of tea, we say can I have a cuppa? Or oh, I love a cuppa right now. Ah, this is a funny one. Uh, in Australia, thongs is not a piece of swimwear or underwear as it would be in America. It is footwear. It is otherwise known as flip-flops. Um, it's, it's, it's rubber sandals essentially on your feet with, with a piece that goes between your toes to, to stop the rubber from falling off. Yep, it's footwear. Thongs are footwear. Um, be Oh, I almost said a BYO. BYO is bring your own. So that's bring your own alcohol. Um, usually at some restaurants, you'll see BYO out the front. It means you can purchase food there and you can bring your own alcohol and, um, and that can be kept at the restaurant. You'll, you'll usually have to pay a corkage fee, a, a fee to drink that alcohol at the restaurant. But yeah, that's BYO. Um, BYO can be for other things other than alcohol. It just means bring your own. Intermediate, your shout, that's another drinking term. That means it's your turn to pay for the round of drinks when you're at a pub, when you're at a drinking place. Um, we call, um, I'm not sure what else you would call them, but we call a place where you go to drink beer and wine and other alcohol, the pub. So your shout, uh, rock up. You might rock up to the pub. 
wearing a pair of thongs. Um, yeah, and then you, when, when you're served a drink, you might say cheers. Sangers, that means sandwiches. I'll say that again. A sanger is a sandwich. How you're going, that's common. Often we might say, how, how's it going? How's it going? Dodgy means no good. Well, this one's embarrassing. Budgie smudge, smuggler. Um, that's a pair of swimmers or something you wear, might wear swimming as a male. Um, they're usually the more uh, less covering of your body type of swimmers. Um, yeah, look up budgie smuggler if you want to know exactly what, what they are. Ah, bludger. This stems from... Oh, it, it, it basically means you're you're being lazy. You're bludging around. You're a bludger. Uh, common phrase: "She'll be right." Yep. Um, that 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 sort of speaks to a huge part of how Australians see themselves. We see ourselves as relaxed, laid back. Everything's going to be okay. And that probably is a key difference you you may notice immediately when you get to Brisbane, more so than Sydney. Um, we are. We in Brisbane are pretty laid back. Um, we're pretty relaxed. Um, we do have a pretty good life here. Um, the pressures around, um, oh, typically or traditionally, the pressures around work and housing and food and and finding spaces to walk around our cities have have been pretty pretty easy. Um, that has changed a little bit. You will notice that the cost of living has gone up in Australia and Brisbane. Um, so that is changing, but we, we do like to see the world as being easy and, and everything will be okay. So we say, she'll be right. Oh, another one, good on ya. That means good on you. Instead of you, we say, yeah, good on ya. That was a bit of fun. So the lesson here is, have a go at Australian English. And um, I believe this video will give us some an example of that. One, two, three. G'day, my name is Josh. This is my name, Reese. G'day. Now we're from Australia. We love a good chat, mm -hmm. but not for too long. So what us Aussies have gone and done is abbreviated everything. Australia. Australia. Football. Footy. Tennis ball. Tenno. Biscuit. Biggie. Chocolate. Choppy. Chocolate. Biscuit. Choppy. Biggie. McDonald's, Macca's, Laptop, Flappy, <laughs> ACDC, Packet Nakar, Definitely, Defo, Morning Tea, Monos, no one is a dentist. I say that all the time. What time is it? Monos, Get a Biggie, Afternoon, Arvo, This Afternoon, Savo, Dinner, Dindins, <laughs> Breakfast, Brecky, Service Station, Servo, Petrol, Petty, Bottle Shop, Bottle O, Tomorrow, Tomorrow. <laughs> Bowling club, bowler, garbage man, garbo, postman, posty, RSL, RE, law, whistle, smoke break, smoker, registration, regio, aggressive, aggro, pregnant, preggers, long gone, <laughs> <laughs> swimming costume, fuzzy, mosquito, mozzie, tracksuit pants, track dance, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, Birthday, Birthday, Musician, Music, U Turn, Uli, York, I'm out, West. Westy, Facebook, Facey, Vegetarian, Veggie, Cab Driver, Cabby, Lipstick, Lippy, Fun Glass, Sunnies, Present, Prezzy, Christmas, Chrissy, Christmas Present, Chrissy, Prezzy, St. Vincent de Paul, Vinnies, Salvation Army, Salvo, Cup of Tea, Cup of Tea, British? We are British. Avocado, Avo, Have an Avocado, Have an Avo, <laughs> Spaghetti Bolognese, Spag Bog, Bog. Do you call it spag bog or spag bog? Bog. Oh, I think there's two variations. Spag bog is poop. Underpants. Undies. Beverage. Bevy. Chewing gum. Chewing <laughs> Toasted sandwich. Toasty. Methylated spirits. Metho. Turpentine. Turps. Fella. Fella. Poverty stricken person. Bog home. <laughs> Husband. Abby. Give me. Give me. Trying to. Trying to. Check it. Check it is. Cigarette. Biggie. Tin can of beer. Tinny. Schnitzel. Schnitty. Ambulance. Amber. Fireman. Fire. Cop. Cop. Bricklayer. Ricky. Tradesman. Trady. Umbrella. Rolly. Sick day off work. Sicky. Kangaroo. Roof. Campaign. Shampers. Relatives. Fellows. Expensive. Exy. Brisbane. Brizzy. Derelict. Derrick. Cabernet. Sarong. Capsa. Kindergarten. Kindy. 
I did buy it like a little after smoker. I might go down to the Bolo Silo for a shinny and then with Tomo. And I went back to the Mrs. Dindings with the fam and watching soapies on the telly. I feel like I had to get pulled over by the coppers because I don't have any red dirt. <laughs> we are so bogan. Hopefully, you've learned how to speak Aussie, Australian, so you can have shorter combos, conversations. That's how that. Uh-huh. Oh, but this guy's an actual actor. Check out his page here. See you next time. See you later. See you later. I love that. Um, did you did you hear what Brisbane was? Uh, Brizzy. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, and so you saw a little bit there of Australian sense of humour. Um, when 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 uh, one of them there said uh, "spag bog" instead of uh, uh, sp spaghetti. Spag bowl. Um, he gave him a hard time. Um, he was a little bit sarcastic, um, and that was sort of a, a bit of a demonstration of dry humour. Um, and he was being, he was, he was saying, "What do you mean? You got that wrong. That that mean, that means the wrong has a different meaning." Um, that, that was because they were friends. It's a sign of friendship to give someone a hard time sometimes in Australian culture. I, I think that stems from a lot of different cultures, um, including Irish culture. Um, and, there, and now we've got another video. That's going to be holding a drop bear. She's got the drop bear suit on. <coughs> How are you feeling? Well, at the moment, okay, because there's nothing near me, but it's a bit like a Batman suit. So I'm a bit worried about why I need this level of protection. Okay. Um, they do, do go for a Okay. Right. So drop bears are a close cousin of the koala, but they're actually really vicious. So it's it's sort of like a, a dingo and a, and a normal domestic dog. Um, they're bigger, they've got longer claws. Um, they've actually got really small fangs, and the interesting thing about the fangs is they have a really um, mild venom. It's it's not like a, a snake venom that can make you really sick, but it just causes a lot of really um, local irritation. So the third most common injury that we see in tourists in Australia um, is actually from drop bear attack. So, Do you hear that Australia? Australia. So James Cook, one of the early explorers um, who first came to Australia, he actually... Um, coined the term so um, he was there with Joseph Banks and what they found was that these these things kept dropping out of the trees and attacking them and they thought they looked like little bears so they were just like we'll call them a drop bear and so the names stuck uh, but technically um, it's actually just a subspecies of the koala. It looks visually it looks very like a yeah, koala. Yeah like a like a um, like a, a well a wilder version. So you look at, I won't, I won't come too close, but I'm just, I'm just going to point. So the difference between this and a normal koala, firstly, you're going to see the size. Then if you can see, you see you've got those black hairs that are almost like bristles. They actually come out a lot further from the fur. So they're really, really coarse. Keep your hands there nice and high. Okay. All right, just going to flatten them. Please, I'll give yours now. Okay. Okay. No, no, fast. Okay. Nice and steady with the, the bear. Um, keep them calm. Everybody was very, very worried about this. I'm trying not to be worried because I've been told that you can sense if I'm worried. I've been told that this is quite a dangerous bear that's been known to attack people. It's called a drop bear because they drop out of the sea to attack people. Just been handed it and had to put on all of this protection gear because of what it might do to me. I'm not quite sure what it's doing right now. So oh, it's looking at what? Well, okay. No, right. I thought he was going to get you. Right. Um, I, 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 really want my, to take it I turn insurance might not right. cover the job. I'll take it off. Shit, shit, shit. I'm really not. I, I'm going to get the dark after that. No, okay. Notice I have an extra. Okay, okay. I'll take it off. I'll take it off. I'll take it off. Take it off, off me. Okay. All right, sorry. Okay. All right. Good work, Sam. Thanks, mate. That's great. <laughs> I totally bought this. Totally bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. 
oh my god i'm like it doesn't feel like it's doing anything and then your face is just like oh no it's doing it it's doing it oh my god Oh my goodness me. I didn't actually know that video was in there to be oh here we go. Let's I'll get you to complete the survey in a sec. Um that was a really good example of Aussie or Australian humor. Um it was this dry way in which they explained to her something which gets talked about, the idea of a drop bear. There's no such thing as a drop bear. I'm, I'm, I'd love to keep that going, but <laughs> but uh, um, they they had her on. That's uh, another exp expression you might hear, um, and um, it was just funny to 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 tell a story. Um, they you know they made they looked after that person, made sure that she was safe, but um, there was a pretense of, of something that's not true, and um, that was just a koala. It's um. They do have claws. You do need to be a little bit careful, but that, that everything was okay. That's an example of Australian humour. Um, if you could get out your phones and just put that on your phones, um, just ready for a survey. I'd love. We'd love to get your feedback on these um, sessions. There's a couple more slides, and and then we'll we'll move to. Um, I'll have a look at the Q and A questions. That's questions and answers. Um. Yes, you'll you'll hear you'll see this um, on your calendars. Um, that's there's nothing no surprises there. Each country has their national days. Um, there's a list of the ones the national days in Australia. Their their holidays. Um, you will notice that a lot of the shops, supermarkets, and things like that have different opening hours. Sometimes they're closed during the day, um, but they're also big cultural celebrations. Um, New Year's Day is a big deal. Australia Day is mm, contentious. Um, it represents the day that um, the British colonised Australia. So, so there, there's there's different views on 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 that day. There's Easter, um, uh, harking to Australians um, uh, Christian kind of his, historical heritage. Uh, Anzac Day that talks about that, that's talking about war and, and and how Australia participated with New Zealand um, over in the First World War and and ever since uh, Labor Day, Christmas Day very big. Uh, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas, and now we have the King's Birthday. Ah, uh, uh, one more video and then then we're done. I saw a number of people without shoes. Then I learned they were Australian. I went to a cafe at the airport and I asked for a cappuccino. And they said, no worries. And I said, no, 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 I'm not worried. Take your time. There was this awkward moment. Does it mean I'm going to do it in an easy way? Does it mean it's difficult, but don't worry? And later I understood that Australian use no worries a lot and in many situations. It's like inshallah in Arabic or riyallah. Someone told me that in Aussie, I would be bending my elbow a lot. I thought it was a very naughty word. I didn't realize that it meant going out for a drink and having a drink at the bar. At work, every Friday, Aussies like to go out and have a drink with their mates. And I have been bending my elbow ever since I migrated. When people met me, they said, sir, how are you going? I said, I'm fine, thank you. But everybody else said, I'm good. And then the, how can I say for myself, I'm good? <laughs> I don't know if I'm a good person. So these are the little nuances that you learn, you capture. When I first came on holidays and I saw a number of people without shoes, then I learned they were Australian. But I thought, like, oh, poor people, somebody stole their shoes and their, you know, things. And they had to go back to Australia without shoes. And then I learned that, that it was a very natural way of Australian to walk and be so informal and so casual. I was yeah, quite surprised uh, to see that uh, there were uh, barbecues and sausages sizzling right outside the working station. Frankly, that's a, a tradition here, the democracy society. Or you go to Bunnings every weekend, you will find the sausage sizzle is quite common there. Sausage uh, leads to many things uh, in this part of the world, I guess.
Okay. Yeah, another summary of Australian culture and an attempt you'll find in many versions of Australian culture. Um, you certainly will. Um, yeah, but in Queensland, it's a warm climate. It's a little bit cold right now. Um, we might see as low as seven degrees, maybe. Maybe a little bit colder sometimes in the middle of the night in, in Brisbane. Um, but the days typically get over 20 degrees, even in winter. Um, so it's very easy not to wear shoes. Um, and so that's... That's, that, that hasn't come from British culture. Um, that may have even come from Australian Aboriginal culture, but it's very comfortable and very normal in Australian culture not to wear shoes. Um, but you will wear shoes when you're at university typically. But if you don't want to, hmm, you may not be allowed to in, in, in lecture theater, I, theater, I suspect. So there you go. So we have we have an Australian culture that that is a that it sits differently to the culture within the University of Queensland, um, where it's important for safety to wear shoes. So, so you'll just observe and you will and you will learn, um, and um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, if you're not sure what someone means when they say sanger, they will they will kind they'll very they'll be very happily explain to you they mean sandwich. Um, I'll go back to the um, survey. Um, and then we, I might have a look at these um, Q and A's. Looks like they're all answered. Very good. Okay. Um, if there's no more questions, I will close this session and wish you a good good day. What was the questions that were asked? Will the session recordings be available to us? Yes. Uh, some Australian dishes you would recommend trying. That's always a hard question. We, we, we do say that pavlova is, a, is an Australian dish. Um, ask an Australian when you get here. There's lots of different dishes. Um, a lot of them are variants of things that you'll find around the world. Um, I would recommend trying Australian Chinese food. We, if, if you go to any country town in Australia, you will find a Chinese restaurant uh, you'll be surprised when you order off the menu that it's probably not anything like anything that uh, that you've eaten when in China. Um, we have sweet and sour pork. I recommend sweet and sour pork. There's my there's my tip for um, an Australian cuisine. Um, and I will probably end this uh, end this right now. Thanks thanks guys and 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 feel free to stop in and ask questions to at Student Central. Uh, that's a, a building uh, within the St. Lucia campus in Brisbane, the biggest campus. Um, that's a place to ask questions. If you're not sure about anything, um, you can make an appointment with myself as a student advisor, or you can talk to, this, um, to, the, to the different staff members that will be at the front door there. So have a good day and see you later.